Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing great out there. Uh, and uh, here we are uh, with our uh, new online lecture. Today, we'll talk about documentary and its relationship to reality. As you know, in previous lectures, we have discussed in detail that how documentaries depict realities and how they show real people, real life. So today, we'll discuss the relationship between reality and documentary filmmaking. So when we talk about reality, that means that you are showing on your screen what is happening out there without having your own personal bias. So that's why there is a very strong relationship between documentary filmmaking and real life. So we defined documentary in detail in previous lectures that what actually documentary is. So let's have a recap. Basically, it's approach to the real as opposed to the fiction. You have seen both of the genres, fiction and the real life. So fiction films, they usually have characters, actors, and a storyline. Definitely, we have a storyline in documentary as well, but that story is real. That is performed by the real people who are part of that story. It deals with the issues of fact, of real events, and of actuality. So actuality is the single most important component of documentary filmmaking. The documentary is often set up in conflict with fiction, creating a binary opposition. So it is quite contrary that it is opposite to the fiction. Basically, the fiction lies entertainment films and the factual truth documentaries and realist films. So the creative treatment of actuality is called documentary and that is according to John Grayson, the earlier documentary filmmaker or the pioneer documentary filmmaker. What makes film realistic? This is a huge question and uh, over the period of time um, since the inception of this genre, um, people are asking this question that what makes film realistic? So if you have seen film um, Blair Witch Project, Blair Witch Project actually depicts reality, but it is not a documentary film. They have given a treatment of reality, but it's not a documentary. What realism is? In terms of representing the truth, documentaries are generally accorded the highest status in filmmaking. To document a subject implies keeping a factual record for future reference. However, even the most realistic documentaries have to be constructed. Now here we have a whole lot of debate that if documentaries are realistic or they are based on real life events, or they are factual, how we can say that documentaries have to be constructed? Yes, we have to construct the reality. The reality is out there, but when you need to show that reality, you have to construct it in a way that it looks like a film. So that's why we say that documentaries have to be constructed. As Bruzy in 2000 says in his research, we need to accept that documentary can never be the real world. Documentaries are performative acts whose truth comes into being only at the moment of filming. So that means when you are filming, you are constructing realities. Reality is out there. That means if you ask your um, subjects to perform in a way, the way they perform in their real lives, that is not a bad thing to ask. That is reality because if they are uh, actually performing an activity, they perform every single day. That means on a given time, if you ask them to perform that activity, that is not a bad thing. Like Nanook of the North, when this film was recorded, uh, the filmmaker asked these people to perform certain activities to film. When we talk about John Grierson, he was actually Scottish documentary filmmaker from 1898 to 1972. Uh, he's the founder of, founder of British documentary filmmaking. 
influential friendship with Robert Philhardy, who he referred to as father of documentary, argued that documentaries should combine information with education and propaganda. Now here we have three things to understand that documentaries should <clears throat> educate and propagate as well. And they should come with some kind of information. So that means if you are making a documentary, obviously it should have information. It should have, and that information should lead to some kind of education and it should propagate as well. He oversaw the production of over 40 documentaries on aspect of British life in 1930s and 1940s. So the idea was to engineer social reforms by highlighting some of the deprivation endured by the working class people. Focus on ordinary lives like Nightmare. You have seen that documentary in the class, Nightmare. So Nightmare was a documentary of 1936 about mail train from Scotland to London. It was a promotional film for the post office produced by the GPO film unit. The most commercially successful film of the British documentary movement. So it was made with a budget of 2000 British pounds. A poem by English poet W. H. Auden was written for it, used in the closing few minutes. So when we talk about filmmaking or documentary filmmaking, we need to understand the filmmaking movement. So there are uh, very important filmmaking movements like Cinema Verite. Uh, in 1950, more detailed and naturalistic approach to documentary filmmaking developed. And that was Cinema Verite, Cinema Truth. Style was developed in France. So the intention was to observe and record the reality of everyday life as it happened without the usual organizational planning, structure, direction. The approach was made possible by new lightweight mobile cameras. They were not actually mobile phone cameras, but very lightweight cameras. So 1960 was the era when the television had become the principal medium for documentary production. Most of the films that were produced, uh, they were broadcasted on television. So the genre was typified by the use of an authoritative presenter or the voiceover. So nowadays, as you see these voiceovers coming into your documentaries, that started in 1960. So recorded interviews with expert and ordinary people, visual evidence via location shots, archive films and photographs, etc. Seamless editing and smooth narrative flow of such documentaries contribute to creating a sense of irrefutable truth and authenticity. This disguises the editorial values and choices which shape the making of all documentaries. Then after two, uh, 1960, 2000 was the era when documentary filmmaking changed entirely. This is an era where it has been argued that the documentary is outmoded. We are in post-documentary times, Corner says in his research conducted in 2002. However, the success of nature or wildlife documentaries continue to grow. So after 2000, wildlife and nature documentaries got a lot of popularity. So popularity of BBC series such as The Blue Planet or The Planet Earth got a lot of popularity. So recent success for cinematic documentaries like J Touching the Void has got a lot of popularity as well. But that, that film is also, uh, say, an uh, adventure uh, documentary. It's a huge success at the box office the most successful documentary film in the history. Guardian says, so this was produced in 2003. Then era comes after Michael Moore. Uh, we have talked a lot about Michael Moore and his film Fahrenheit 9-11 has made more money than any other documentary to the date. Then there was a film Surprise Me. This film was actually a uh, super long films follow a 30 days period from February 1 to March 2nd, 2003, during which he eats only McDonald's food. So Super Size Me uh, is a very good film when we talk about food industry or famous food chains. 
So after, in, from 2000 on, uh, onward, documentaries made their place on television. And there were a whole lot television, um, documentary television channels who used to broadcast documentaries like National Geographic, Discovery, RT documentaries, DW documentaries. So uh, documentaries got a lot of popularity on television. So what you have to do, you have to find a definition and example of the three different types of documentary, expository, observational, interactive, and reflexive. We discussed these documentaries in previous uh, class as well. So look into the definitions of these uh, documentaries. I will upload uh, uh, an assignment regarding uh, this. So the second uh, movement is fly on the wall. During the past 20 years, the cinema, cinema variety style of documentary filmmaking has become increasingly popular in television. Known as fly on the wall. This approach represents the subject apparently unmediated by a film crew, a presenter or reshooting. Those participating tend to speak for themselves. Their words and actions are apparently merely recorded and observed, not reflected or on or mediated by a presenter. In helping to define the distinctive fly on the wall approach, Roger Graff listed certain rules to be applied in the production. Filming events exactly as they happen, you are not supposed to edit them, you are not supposed to alter them, agreeing in advance the specific subjects to be filmed, showing the edited version to the participant, but only to ensure any factual error may be corrected. So critics of Fly on the Wall have argued, while seeming more natural and unmediated, these documentaries are subject to considerable editorial control during post-production. Shooting uh, ration up to the 50 hours of recorded videos to one hour broadcast. That means you have more editorial control. Editor will try to generate as much traumatic interest and entertainment as possible. Again, when we talk about documentary, convergence if is again a very important topic to look into. So there is a growing overlap and convergence of documentary and drama on television. As early as 1966, Dan Loach applied cinema verita style filming to a drama about homelessness. Kathy Come Home, this was a drama. The documentary feel of the film created a stronger sense of realism and contributed to its strong impact on audience. So reality TV is again a hybrid of the documentary genre. Emphasis that they feature real life and real people, a growing phenomenon which seemingly allow people to appear as themselves. So they utilize actual or sometimes reconstructed scenes often made possible by the growth in availability, technical sophistication of the camcorders. It covers a wide variety of programs featuring people in different roles. So there is a criticism on reality TV, and it is seen by many as a corruption of the documentary genre. So whatever you are watching as a, on the name of reality television, this is not actually a documentary. Because a lot of people argue that reality TV fails to be genuinely informative or revelatory. Video footages of ordinary people's personal experiences may be exploitative in pandering solely to the audience voyeurism. Archives high rating at relatively low expense. Basically, it achieves high ratings at relatively low expense. Cheap programming, which drives serious, expensively well-researched programs of our TV. So this was uh, today's lecture. Uh, we'll meet in next lecture. Tell them, wash your hands, take care of yourself, and stay safe. Bye-bye.